Hi there! I wanted to share a schmink watercolor haul with you. And these two bronze, aqua bronze. But first, we're gonna look into this newest release of Schminke, which is a square white metal palette. I think these are the colors that come with this palette. And let me remove. Like it's completely white. And it comes with 12 colors. And it has an unfinished edge, which is too bad. I don't understand why Schminke keeps doing that. Not finishing or rolling up the edges, which would be a lot better. Even the railing is white, so that's quite impressive. And it seems to come with a split primary, like a cool, a warm yellow, red and blue. A couple of greens, earth tones, an ivory black and an opaque white. So we're definitely going to swatch this palette. Then I also got this palette. I think this one was released last year. And this looks also quite interesting. It's like an aluminum finish with long ridges. So it seems like it's one large mixing surface with some ridges. And then of course, eight mixing wells. This one comes with nine colors and also has like the unfinished edge. I already have a few of these colors in tubes already, but I really like this palette. So I got it. And I got two of the aqua bronze powder powders. I think this looks more, this is silver and it's pale gold. I wanted like a bright, vibrant gold. And this silver looks more like an aluminum. Do I have to open it up? I will read the instructions later. Um, by the way, this does contain aluminum, aluminum pigment with dextrin glue binder. So if you mix it with water, it has binder on its own, so it adheres to the watercolor paper. We're going to swatch these as well. And in a different video, I want to explore the primary set of the essential set of Schminke. This is the palette that I'm most excited about. We're going to swatch all of these colors. Um, I think we should start with this one. So we're going to unwrap these watercolors and then swatch them. So we're going to start off with the Schmieke White Metal Palette. And this contains 12 colors, the Ivory Black and the Titanium opaque white is on this side so it's just cut off let's start off with the lemon yellow i like how well schmink watercolors re-wet there's already dust in the yellow Next up, Queen Gold. I haven't tried the Schminke Queen Gold before or ever. By the way, I'm using the Baohong Cold Press Watercolor. Personally, I don't like using the Baohong Watercolor Paper for 
painting because I like to sketch before I paint. And the Bahong watercolor paper has a really noticeable texture that you even feel while you are sketching. So I just don't like the feeling of it. And sometimes it leaves like those white specks. And I don't know if it's because of the texture or something else. Why are there little dust particles in my watercolors before I even try them out? Next up, Scarlet Red, which is a beautiful warm red color. Matter Red Dark, which is a beautiful crimson like color. It's one of my favorite reds. And I think this is a dual pigment. And I will... You might have already seen it, but put the pigment information on screen while I'm swatching. Ultramarine Finest and I think Ultramarine Finest is the least granulating Ultramarine that Schmincke has and I'm more used to the French Ultramarine that Schmincke has I think there was once a promotion and I got a few tubes of the French Ultramarine So I've been using that ever since. And I haven't seen any reason to try out the different ultramarines. Helio Cerulean. Which is a nice cool blue. I like the cerulean blue, it's not too much. I I think the Schmink watercolors are overall a bit more delicate than other brands. Next up, Taylor Green. This is a pretty handy mixing color. May green. I love these types of greens. Burn Sienna, which I think is a dual pigment. I personally have the transparent sienna but this is the first time I'm trying out this burnt sienna and I quite like how it looks wet. Wait when it dries. Burnt umber
And now the last two colors. Mm, let's start with uh, titanium opaque white. And the last color, ivory black. I want to do like an extra layer of the scarlet red because it kind of looks dull. So let's see if we can punch it up. No, I picked up too much, but it should be a little bit more vibrant. And I'm using, by the way, the Da Vinci Cassineo brush, which tends to like water. I will do the same for the Burnt Sienna. I actually really like this color selection. The primary colors, the earthy tones, and even the ivory black and titanium opaque white. It's okay, it's not my favorite, but I don't mind it. So that's it for the white metal palette. Next up, the ultimate mixing palette, which I found to be a pretty strange name yes the ultimate mixing palette but it doesn't come with a cool yellow but I kind of like how this palette looks I already unwrapped the colors so you can go straight into swatching these colors and we're also going to swatch of course the silver and the pale gold so i'm also wondering why it looks like it's more finely milled on top and like there is more rough particles at the bottom so are you supposed to mix it i'm not sure like, maybe you can see it. This palette also contains a lot of um, granulating colors. I'm just going to tape the corners so it will stay flat. First up, Turner's Yellow. Yeah, 
Next up, transparent orange, which is a very vibrant orange. Queen Magenta Forest pink, which green lights lovely. And I think it's one of the best forest pink, but I haven't tried that many. <laughs> so maybe there are better forest pink out there, but I wouldn't know. Cobalt Violet Hue, which is also a beautiful color. It's also one of my favorite Twinkle watercolors. And I think they also use this color quite a lot in the Super Granulating watercolor line. And it's on the lower tinting side. Next up, Thalo Self Thalo Self Sapphire Blue. Which seems to be wet and look a lot more vibrant compared to the Helio Cerulean. And it's also a bit warmer. So I think this is like a Taylor Sapphire Red shade. Next up, Cobalt Azure, which I haven't tried out before. I think it's like a cerulean blue. It's also on a lower tinting side. But it's such a beautiful soft blue. I'm quite curious about the Viridian. Hmm. It takes a little bit more effort to be wet. It's already starting to granulate. So this set has like one, two, three, four granulating watercolors. And in that way, I would say it's pretty versatile. And now the last color, pearly and green. And I just love a good pearly and green. It's such a versatile, lovely color. So here are the colors all swatched out from the ultimate mixing set. And I love the fact that it has like a lot of granulated watercolors. Potter's pink, cobalt violet hue, cobalt azure and viridian. 
for all granulating watercolors. So, which palette would you pick? The white metal palette or the ultimate mixing palette? I still like the color selection of the white ultimate palette, but this is a great add-on palette. What I also noticed is that this palette doesn't stay closed. It's like it, well, this one does. So I don't know what's happening. It's like when I look in the front, this one has like a nick on top. Well, this doesn't. Well, this one doesn't have a deep dent, so it doesn't stay closed. So this would be a horrible travel palette. So I, I don't know what happened, maybe a production mistake. So one more time, the colors. I'm also gonna swatch, of course, the silver and the pale gold. But overall, I really like the colors Schmincke picked. This, is, this one is really, um, this one is really interesting. And this is more of a standard color selection. Now of course we have to try these out. I'm quite curious. Uh, let me zoom in. I'm very accident prone so Oh, it's all the way filled to the top. Oh my gosh. It does have like a strong scent, like a glue-like scent. It's hard to describe. Now I'm gonna add a few drops of water until I have like the right consistency. I don't know if I can fill out the whole box, but we'll see. It's a little harder to swatch over cold press watercolor. I'm gonna add just a bit more water. I'm just wondering how well this washes off the brush. I'm just using a Himimiya brush. You know what? For the pale gold, I'm gonna add like a black line. 
but I forgot to do professional over here. Of course. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> but for the black gold, I'm gonna for the pale. <sighs> for the pale gold, I'm gonna add a black line. Such a bad YouTuber. This one isn't filled all the way to the top, but the silver was like quite surprising. I was like, oh no! I have like now gold dust particles everywhere, and I still have to film like another video. Oh my gosh! It's adding. Two drops and see how it mixes. Oh my god, that looks beautiful. <gasps> no, are you is this serious? Just a little bit more water. So I can't seem to mix everything. This is beautiful, <laughs> and I haven't even swatched it. And by the way, I let me check. Because I think these aqua bronze are vegan. I will look that up and I will put it on screen if it's vegan. Friendly. So I think that's what I read. But I will confirm it. Like. Okay, now we have to swatch it. Even the brush, like, it's... If I use too much water, I don't think so. I think it's this brush that doesn't seem to pick up that much. So here are the silver and pale gold close up. I think they are semi opaque. And they have like a lovely shine. So I've removed the tape. I'm kind of wondering if this stays on. Yes, it doesn't transfer. So when it dries, it stays on. Which is actually quite great. So 
So that was the small Schminke haul. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more of me, subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.